everyone, welcome back to my channel. This video is to shame me. <laughs> Y'all should be so ashamed of yourself. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you the 10 books. I have 10 books left that I have owned since before I started my channel. So I have had these books from anywhere between two to three years, I think, for all of them. And frankly, I just want them gone. <laughs> Get out of my kitchen! We only have 10 left and I just want them out of my life. I just want them out of my life. I want to read them so that all of my books are like newer books. I feel like these books are stragglers. I feel like I've had them for so long that I need to read them. So I have owned all these books for between two to three years and we're just going to chat about them. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. <laughs> First, we have got lovely edition as well. This makes it even more embarrassing. Anyway, The Silence of the Girls by Pat. Barker. Now, this one I know is like a Greek retelling. I originally thought of this as a book that like BookTube wouldn't really read. <laughs> like it wouldn't be its thing. And then suddenly like everyone has been reading it. Like in the past like couple months, I've seen it loads, especially like maybe last autumn. So not the past couple months, but like last year at the end of the year. I think my problem with this is I don't really know the plot. This was one that I like borrowed from my mum. It wasn't one that I bought myself. I believe it is a story of like women, I don't know if it's women goddesses or like normal women in this, is it the Trojan War? One of the wars? <laughs> I need to like consult whole histories to relearn all my Greek history because I can't remember any of it. A lot of you are from America so you won't have had whole histories but that means you didn't have a childhood crush on Matthew Bainton and frankly that means I'm better than you. <laughs> I want to fuck you the minute I saw you. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. Great. I don't mean this to feel so like that, but yeah, he is hot. He is fine. Okay, I do want some of that. So yeah, I think this is like that war told from women's perspective rather than men. Let me know if you read this. I feel like I would love it. So many people love it. It's actually not even that long. How long is it? Like 300 pages? Yeah, it's like just 300 pages. So it's not even that long. I need to read it. I did have plans to read this last autumn, but I didn't read as much as I thought I was going to. And part of me just thinks I should save this book and the next book for this next autumn. Let me show you the next one actually. The next one, you're gonna you're gonna yell at me. Everyone's gonna yell at me. Cersei by Madeline Miller, another beautiful cover. Like I talk about all the time how I'm a bitch for beautiful covers, and then I've got these ones sitting on my shelf and I'm just not reading them. Again, I did plan to read this, like do a reading vlog for this last autumn and I just never got around to it. So this is similar in a way. It's like the story of Cersei, who I think is like an often forgotten female god. And I think it's just kind of like her life. I think it's like lots of individual stories from what I've heard about it. I feel like everyone's reception of this is overwhelmingly positive, but recently I've been hearing some like vaguely negative reviews and I'm gonna be like, I bought this for my mum because I wanted to read it. <laughs> I've never read it. Please shame me. With all of these, I want you guys to tell me in the comments what books you think I should prioritise because I need some help. Oh, okay. Next one is one that I don't hear a lot of people speak about. It is Biased, The New Science of Race and Inequality by Jennifer Eberhardt. So this is a book all about like statistical racism or like the statistics behind unconscious racial bias. And it basically shows how like insidious unconscious bias is and how prevalent it is and how inescapable it is. So I love nonfiction, but I definitely used to read a lot more, I would say. Like before I had my channel, I was a bit more of a nonfiction gal. I would read like one nonfiction, one fiction, one nonfiction, one fiction. I think I used to want to educate myself more with books and now I'm just like, let a bitch relax. Let a bitch escape. But I am excited to read this. I've been meaning to read it for so long. Evidently, that's what this whole fucking video is, Megan. Dum dum. <laughs> but I just don't know like how I would ever fit it into a reading vlog. So part of me just thinks I should just read it of my own volition at some point, not for a reading vlog. I'm starting to do that. I'm starting because I filled out, I think I told you about this in my last video. I filled out like a series tracker. <laughs> And I was so embarrassed at how many series I've started and not finished. And I think like, if it's like a third book in a series, some of you guys won't care about that. So I think I need to start not reading them all in vlogs, just reading them in between. But I need to start reading a lot more in order for that to happen. But yeah, biased, someone shame me. I've been reading this for so long. You have no, I you have no idea like how close I've come to read this so many times. <gasps> it's sad. It's sad, you know? 
it's it's a shame okay next we have our first of a few that are wrapped up if you don't know i do a series called wrapped up where i've wrapped up <laughs> some of my books and uh, i unwrap them and read them so this i think there's three on this list that are still wrapped up and this is alias grace by margaret atwood i remember going to the shop and buying this and being so <gasps> so excited to read it. I think what intimidates me is that it's more like, obviously Margaret Atwood is a bit more like, not, I wouldn't call it literary fiction, but like, she's not YA contemporary, is she? <laughs> not that there's anything wrong, but you know what I mean? Like, I'm a bit more intimidated to pick it up. This, I believe, is a like, I think it's set in like Victorian times, and it's about a woman who's been accused of murder, and maybe even like witchcraft, and it's a about her life. I used to always say that Margaret Atwood was one of my favourite authors. I really loved The Handmaid's Tale when I read it when I was like 13, so we need to update that perspective. <laughs> I've read a few. I've read The Heart Goes Last, which I really loved, again, when I was younger. And then more recently I read The Blind Assassin, which I liked as well. And so I used to have a thing about how I was gonna like collect all of the Margaret Atwood books that are available in this edition. It'll be the one I'm showing you. I love them. I wanna read Cat's Eye really badly but I'm not allowing myself to buy any more Margaret Atwood books until I read this one. And it's it's not been read for like th three years, three years, close to three years, so. <sighs> what I die, what a die, what I die. I love Margaret Atwood's writing. I love how she spans so many different genres. I love that she writes more historical sometimes, writes dystopian, writes sci-fi. Like she writes so many different things. I think she's a genius. I do want to read all her books because I've never had a bad experience with a Margaret Atwood book. Which, like, she's one of the only authors I've given all of her books like four or five stars. So a bitch needs to carry on, but I'm intimidated once again. Next is another one. I bought this one secondhand a long, long time ago. It is The Wife Between Us by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen. I think it's about like the ex-wife and the new wife of a guy and their relationships. I don't know. I've come close to getting rid of this, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm just going to read it at some point. I feel like it would be good for a readathon. I feel like it'd be like a super quick thriller. I've heard a lot of good things about Greer Hendricks Hendrix and Sarah Pekinen's collaboration, so I definitely want to check it out. Let me know if you've read this one. I feel like it was popular and then it's died off and then I've just never wanted to get back into it. I should just read it. I should just read it and then it'll be gone and I'll be a free woman. I'll be a free woman. Me after reading all of these books. I'm free. I've gone out. I don't usually put off thrillers, so I don't know why I've put this one off for so long, but I have. But I have. Next one. Uh, you guys go drag me for this, huh? Okay. The next one has been, since I bought it, a five star prediction. <laughs> and I haven't read it! I haven't read it in like two and a half years. The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. I just need to read it. You know what this is about? Probably I've spoken about it shit ton. If you watch all my videos, Evan Hardcastle dies. The character who we're reading from their perspective wakes up in a different body of the people at this party every day, reliving the same day, trying to figure out who killed. And I read Stuart Turton's newer book, The Devil in the Dark Quarter, in a reading vlog. And I loved it. I gave it five stars. So this guy, I know he has the key to my heart. I just need to read it. <laughs> I've had it for so long. Nice spread edges. I got this also secondhand. Can we just talk about her? She's in perfect condition. She brings me so much joy. She's huge, but she's so beautiful. She's a mammoth, of course. I love murder mysteries. I obviously now love Stuart Turton's writing. There's nothing to lose. Why have I not read this? I've almost, I think I have read, <laughs> I've come close to reading this in like, three reading vlogs. I've put it on the TBR for the reading vlog and then like halfway through the reading vlog I say psych bitches we're not reading it. I've come close so many times yet that means nothing because I haven't read it. I haven't read it. Next is another one I have come close to unhauling a couple times. It was one that I bought when I thought I should buy books that I was supposed to read um, and now I just don't care uh, and it is Atonement by Ian McEwen. Firstly this is an ugly cover that, na that makes me not want to pick it up. I'm a shallow superficial bitch. I'm actually not but let's pretend I am. It's like the movie edition. I don't know her. I don't know. Die kenne ich nicht. It was about 1935. I thought it was about the. I thought it was about World War Two. Is it not? I swear my guy is like a soldier. Well, I don't even know what this is about. <laughs> I just hold on to it because I'm like, 
I should read it. I will probably like it. But it's just the picking it up that's hard. And it intimidates me. So I just need you guys to sell this one to me. Like I need you to put the graft in and tell me that I need to read it. Otherwise it will not be getting read. But like, I feel like I'll like it. I'm torn. But like, um, when am I going to read it? No, I'm going to read it. It'll be fine. I'm going to read it. I need to start reading like 30 books a month. I need to start putting the shift in. I need to start... Woo! I need to start reading more. Next one is a chunky boy. It's why I've never read it. It's also a part of a series. So like, how can you write a book this long and it be a series? I don't understand. Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel. I know I will like this. I am a little bit of like a history hoe. I like, I like Kings and Queens, Tudor, Victorians from that to that era. That is my comfort zone. Victorian era, Tudor, I don't read like Tudor era, is this Tudor era? Yeah it is. I don't read Tudor era books enough. How long is she? Let's consult. 650 pages. No. When was the last time I read a 650 page book? No. 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 I'm gonna have a little bit of space, okay? Because in a minute, you might see a tear. All I know about this is that it's like the court of the Tudors and the rise of Thomas Cromwell, lowborn, I'm just reading the back now, lowborn boy, charmer, bully, master of deadly intrigue, and finally most power of Henry VIII's courtiers. This feels, this is never going to happen because this isn't the way my life is because if I go on holiday I need to make a video of it, but it feels like the kind of book I need to go sit in a cottage for a week and just read this book just like shut the world off and just read this book. I feel like give me a week and I can do it. Give me a week of nothing else and I can read this book. But that's never gonna happen. That's just not the way my life works. Any of you have read it, convince me. Convince me. And then the last two are ones that are wrapped up. We have got Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. Now I have this beautiful edition. Tell her she's pretty, she likes to hear it. I wanna read more classics, I'm always saying this, but again, I get scared of them. Like if I have a quick placed YA thriller in front of me and I have a classic. Who do you think I'm picking up? But I have heard so many good things about Rebecca. I again did plan to read this last October for like a spooky video so maybe I will just save it. But yeah I know this about like this woman who marries a man and she goes and lives at his house and she's haunted by the wife, his old wife Rebecca. And it's like a classic for a reason. I feel like Daphne du Maurier is a kind of classic author I could get into more. So like pray for me that I do it. I feel like mm, maybe. Mm, maybe. I feel like it's the spooky vibes I love. You guys know I love like haunted house vibes. So there's no reason I'm not gonna love this. And why am I putting it off? Beautiful cover. And then lastly, again, I bought this book on the same trip I bought Alias Grace. I remember taking a picture. I bought them with a Waterstones gift card. I remember. I remember. I have the mind of a master, master, I have the mind of a mastermind. What's that? I don't know. It is Educated by Tara Westover. This was big a couple years ago. It's like the memoir of this woman who lived in like an extreme family. She wasn't allowed to be schooled when she was a kid and so she kind of like when she's older educates herself, goes to university and it's her story of being like educated as an adult I believe. It had so many great reviews and everyone loved it. Everyone and their mum loved it. I think my mum loved it. Some of you have asked when my mum is setting up her new booktube channel. It's in the works. No I'm joking it's not. <laughs> But she does read like all the books I read. Update, she hated The Sanatorium by Sarah Pierce. If you read that thriller, Jenny did not like it. She DNF'd it. <laughs> but yeah, Educated is one I've wanted to read for a long time. Obviously, it's a video. <sighs> Please tell me that you loved it and motivate me to read it again because I need the motivation. So that is all of my TBR veterans that I've been hanging around on my TBR for like three, two, three years. I just want them gone. I feel like when these are gone, it'll be a weight off my chest because I know they're always lurking. I know Wolf Hall is always there looking at me, looking at me and being like, bitch, let me know which ones are your favorites. Hopefully I'll get to them soon. If you've gotten to the end, comment a sad face. I'm sad. <laughs> I'm sad. Maybe comment if you have it. Comment the emoji that's the smiley face. I'm gonna tear. Smile. I'm smiling through the pain. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I've got two really fun, exciting videos coming out this week on Thursday and Saturday. So make sure you ring the bell if you haven't already. I always forget to say that, but ringing the bell will help me out so much. I've got such fun videos coming out. And yeah, I will see you very, very soon on Thursday in another video. Bye.